Uh, Hello, welcome to the Wild Review on the Wild Reviewer, and today I'm going to review a thing. I like Doctor Who. Just putting that out there. I like Doctor Who. It's a show that I've yet to discuss on this channel, mostly because I haven't really found the right time to talk about it. However, before this new season of the Wild Review premiered, I laid out a perfect time to talk about this wonderful, amazing, fantastic show. After Christmas. There's a reason for it, and if you're a Whovian, like I am, I actually don't consider myself a Whovian much. A Whovian is what fans of Doctor Who call themselves, if you're not familiar with it. But if you're a Whovian, you'll most likely understand why I'm going to talk about it after Christmas, mostly maybe in January. Uh, if you're not a Whovian, you don't watch Doctor Who, and you, you want to know the reason why, as they say in the show, SPOILERS! It's, it's just a really big thing. I, I'll discuss it when I talk about it. After Christmas, that's when it's going to be talked about. I promise that. It's going to be one of the very first things I talk about after the big 2017 review in January. It's going to be like, yeah, it's going to be the second video in January, all right? Just putting it right there. Put it on your calendars. Doctor Who review. I won't go into much about the show today, but I am going to touch a little bit about the show, just so I can give you a better understanding of the real thing that I'm going to be talking about, which is a spin-off that actually aired about, I want to say, a year from this time. It wasn't really given a huge chance. It was recently just cancelled, only about a month ago, and I think it's finally time I give my opinion on it, seeing that I've seen this product of the spinoff. A short little summary of Doctor Who without getting into the big details of the show, which will be saved for the January review. Doctor Who focuses on a time-traveling alien known as the Doctor. He has a real name, but nobody really knows his name because he goes by the name the Doctor. He travels in a time machine spaceship known as a TARDIS, which stands for Time and Relative Dimension in Space. Doctor Who has been running since 1963 on the BBC and has transmitted itself almost all around the world. It is huge. People are obsessed with this show. A show that is so big like Doctor Who and especially one that focuses on a bunch of different characters and has the idea of going to different places and traveling, it's no surprise that they would have a lot of spinoffs. Most spin-offs of Doctor Who are in the forms of comics, novels, but most likely audio dramas. Shows that are at least spin-offs of Doctor Who that air on television are shows such as The Sarah Jane Adventures, Torchwood, and K-9, which for some reason only airs in Australia and has absolutely no connection to Doctor Who other than it's got the K-9 robot. In fact, since it's not even a BBC production, they're not allowed to mention any sort of Doctor Who material at all. I mean, very little but not a lot. They actually had to wipe K-9's memory of any memory he had with the Doctor or anything regarding his own universe. There's also another show that aired way before all these other spin-offs called K-9 and Company, but it was only one episode and I'm gonna assume that it failed. I never really saw it. it had Sarah Jane Smith in it and it was a Christmas special. Don't exactly know where that was going. But the spin-off I'm gonna be talking about today is a little show called Class. And it's literally little because it had such a small amount of time to tell its tale. It had eight episodes. It was just recently cancelled. Clash, written and created by Patrick Ness, focuses on a group of teenagers that are attending Coal Hill High School, which is the school in the Doctor Who universe, and also appeared in the very first episode, An Unearthly Child, as they come together to defend their school and the whole entire universe by a bunch of aliens that make their way into a rift caused by the Doctor from all of his time traveling that just so happened to open up in the middle of their school. The characters include three humans, okay, four, and two aliens. April, who's a sweethearted girl. Ram, a soccer player. Psst, London. 
sorry, a football player, and can come off as a really big jerk, Tanya, who's a girl that's younger than all the other main characters, and actually moved up a grade due to her intelligence, and then you have the alien characters, Charlie, a prince from a different planet named Rodia, Rodia, yeah, that's how you say it, I think, Rodia, and Miss Quill, a woman from the race known as the Quills, who basically invaded Charlie's planet, and because of the whole war battle that happened between the two races, her punishment is now to be a slave to the prince, and now she has this, like, weird urn character alien beast inside of her brain, and now basically has to protect Charlie, and if anything happens to him, then she dies, and if she tries to attack him, she dies. She's just, she's just not having luck. There's also a recurring character named Matt Idris. I'm gonna call him Matt, because I see the name Matt in there. He's a kid from Poland and develops a romantic relationship with Charlie. In the pilot for Tonight We Die, we're introduced to all the main characters like we normally are in the pilot, and a race called the Shadowkin slowly start to make their way onto Earth and into Coal Hill High School. Charlie and Miss Quill realize this is a big problem because these are the exact type of aliens that had them come to Earth in the first place. They basically destroyed Charlie's planet, and that's the whole reason why they're on Earth. On his trip to Charlie's planet, the Doctor ended up saving both Miss Quill and Charlie, and so this way they would be safe, he assigned both Charlie and Miss Quill to take roles as a teacher and a student at Cole Hill. Obviously, the Shadowkin make their way and find them, and on the night of the Autumn Prom, the Shadowkin end up invading Cole Hill High School, destroying the prom altogether, and now the Doctor has to come in and save the day by putting the Shadowkin back to where he came from and closing up the rift and dealing with the problems that are at hand, such as Ram's leg getting cut off and the whole issue with April's heart, which actually doesn't get fixed by him. That's just a totally different thing within the series as the season goes on. The Doctor tells him that, yes, he closed up the rift, but he can't guarantee it's going to stay closed. There's been too much time traveling around in that area, mostly due to him, and like he says in the teaser of this show, he may be able to travel all of space and time, but he can't always be there when somebody needs him. He's a busy guy, he's got other planets and people to save. So he leaves Miss Quill and these four teenagers, and I guess Matt as well, even though he's not a defined member of this team, to be the defenders of Cole Hill High School and basically tackle anything that comes out of that rift. That includes Return of the Shadowkin, as well as a weird dragon tattoo, and killer petals, and... Uh, a weird worm that brings the dead back to life. It was honestly an interesting show in my eyes. I like the idea that there were a group of people that met the doctor, he took care of something and then he leaves, but obviously the problem isn't exactly fixed and he always can't be there for them so they have to try to figure out a way to fix it on their own. Pretty interesting idea. It's a shame it really didn't work out on TV like that. I'm not saying class was a failure. I'm not saying it was a bad show at all. I actually liked the show. I liked what I saw from it. I will admit it's got a different tone than Doctor Who normally has. Doctor Who is a science fiction children's show and it's supposed to be scary but it's also an adventure show. Class is completely the opposite. The sci-fi elements are still there but the show is more for adults. It deals with more adult issues. They have sex in the show. They say swear words without censoring them. It's such a different tone that you would never really guess it came from a product such as Doctor Who, where it's so friendly and sometimes childish and innocent and scary and funny. The show only had eight episodes, so we never really got to learn about these characters. But going off of what I've already said about the characters, giving a little synopsis of how their character traits are, I'm actually a little disappointed I didn't really see much interaction with all of them together. Yeah, they were a team. They had to work together. And don't get me wrong, there are moments in this show where they do work together. I'm not saying that isn't present at all because we clearly see it in the pilot and we see it throughout the show. But the way that we're promoting the show, it kind of sounded like we were getting a Doctor Who version of Power Rangers. You know, how we have a bunch of different teenagers and now they're brought together to work to save the universe and stuff from aliens and evil things coming out their way to destroy people and the, the world. It's got a very similar feel to it, none say the least. I saw the show in the beginning of this year because that's when they started airing it. They aired it along with the 10th season of Doctor Who. I'm not going to say it was bad, but I'm not going to say it was great either. It did lack a lot of things. 
All the characters did have their own little problems, but we would only see like one character work with another one, and then we would see another character be totally isolated from the other characters. I find that Ram out of all of them is a very important character, and I bring him up for a specific reason. He just seems to be one of those interesting characters in the show. April, Tanya, Charlie all seem to be in on this, and even Matt seems to be in on this. Ram is really the only character I feel in the show does not want anything to do with what's going on. He's trying to avoid everything that's happening. I don't think he cares about what the doctor says. I highly doubt he even cared who the doctor was. He was just some guy that fixed his leg. He's basically oblivious to everything that's going around him because he mostly focuses on himself. And the tone I'm getting from his character is he's somebody that does not want to deal with anybody and wants nothing to do with any Doctor Who shenanigans. That's the kind of tone I get when I see his character. Not saying it's bad, but it's a very interesting one because I've never seen a character like that before that was forced to work on a team. Another character that is also a bit of a mystery is Miss Quill. Honestly, she was one of the main focuses of the show, but I feel like she was the one character that we knew about the least. Don't get me wrong, episode 7 was an episode that was basically dedicated all to her. She was mostly the main focus of it. But she never really helped with the team. Occasionally she would, but she never really did. The doctor said she would teach these children the proper way to like defend themselves and how to deal with the rifts in time. I don't feel that she did that at all. Occasionally she would be there, but she was basically in her own world. She was trying to figure out how to get this urn out of her eye. And when she did, she basically isolated herself from everybody else. I think only in the first and last episode did she actually help out with the stuff going on with the cracks in time. Like I said, class wasn't bad, but it's also not the best. I definitely say I did enjoy it. I, I enjoyed seeing a different side of the Doctor Who universe. I, that is something that I think was original on its own. This whole idea, in fact, was original. I've never seen anything like this before, if you exclude the fact of teenagers coming together to save the universe. It's kind of a shame they didn't get a second season, but to be completely honest, I don't think a second season would have worked, and probably if it did make it for a second season, it would have probably gotten cancelled. I kind of knew something was wrong with Class when it started airing on BBC America and we still haven't heard anything about Season 2. We would have heard something by now. It wasn't until a few months ago that Patrick Ness, who created and wrote all eight episodes, came onto the internet and confessed that he's not going to write any more Class episodes, even if it does get picked up for a Season 2 because he felt that it was disrespectful the fact that they kept hiding this from him. He actually had a lot of doubts that there would be a Season 2 because if there was, they would probably start filming at that point. I kind of knew something was up, maybe the ratings weren't just good for this show, I mean that happens. It kind of annoys me that episode 8 did end with a cliffhanger, it ended on two really cool cliffhangers. Well one of them was cool, uh, one focused on April's body that died being resurrected but in the Shadowkin's body, uh, the other cliffhanger was that the Weeping Angels were going to be in this season. In fact Patrick Ness even admitted that if there was going to be a season 2 we were going to see a Weeping Angel planet. I would love to see a Weeping Angel planet. I don't know where these suckers come from. I think knowing my fury about how Labrat's Elite Force ended with the whole we're gonna declare war on the shapeshifters and the whole issue with Douglas not being all right, don't know if he's gonna be okay or dead possibly, I think we can all get a grasp but I'm not one for a show that ends on a cliffhanger. I've expressed that very much but I keep my cool about it all the time. It's not okay! It's not okay! Overall, I think Class was a really interesting idea for a television show, specifically since it was a spin-off from a very popular show such as Doctor Who. I would have liked to see a season two, I would have liked if these characters would have expanded on their personalities and story arcs, maybe if we learned a bit more about them. And that's really my only issue with them, that the characters weren't fully developed, that's why I was having a hard time following them throughout the show. So that's what I think about the Doctor Who spin-off class. Again, my whole Doctor Who review on what I think about that entirely is a totally different video that I'm going to make, and that's going to come probably in January. Again, I'm waiting after Christmas, and when that video comes out, you will see why I'm waiting after Christmas. I will explain why you had to wait. Until then, I want to hear what you guys think. Have you ever seen Doctor Who? Have you seen Class? Have you seen any other... Doctor Who spinoffs. Are you a Whovian? I guess that's a pretty important question. If you're not a Whovian, you won't be able to answer any of these questions. 
Do you agree or disagree with anything that I say in this video? Tell me in the comments and also leave me your suggestions for whatever movie, TV show, or random thing you want me to talk about next. Thanks for watching The Wild Review on The Wild Review, and you just saw me review a thing. Hey, thanks for watching the video. You should probably come back next week because I'm going to be talking about another show that is for adults. This one was a bit for mature adults, but well, th this one's for, for real adults. Real, real adult. Okay, not that real, but it's 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 a TBS show. It's for adults, not no no children allowed. Mwah. Wild like wild uh. life. Oh shoot! I broke the radio. Oh crap! No, now I really broke the radio. Well, I'm not gonna be playing music on this anymore. <laughs>